So this video, Whispers of Arcturus, is going to be like a lot of my other Whisper videos. There's not quite enough information where we can just say it's confirmed or even almost confirmed, but there's some solid stuff out there. Solid enough that if I combined it with some of my analysis, you know, does this make sense? I feel confident saying it's more likely than not. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about Arcturus. For those who don't know, Arcturus was a rumored name at AMD Radeon for a long time now. Some people thought it might be the PS5. Some people thought it might be what comes after Navi, which I guess technically is true. It is coming after Navi, but it's not the replacement for Navi as far as we can tell. No, it looks like this is the next evolution of Vega. And a lot of people go, oh, well, who cares, right? I think that's why this has flown under the radar because... It's not really a gaming architecture, and as such, people think it's boring. But the implications of what's going on here for the greater market are kind of profound, actually, if you ask me. The truth is that GCM always was an architecture designed in times of scarcity, when AMD was not looking good in 2011. They knew they need, Radeon knew that there was a decent chance they could be spun off as their own company again. And so they, and even if they weren't, either way, they better have an architecture that can last a decade. So they made GCM. And this architecture looks like it is going to last a decade, isn't it? Um, it was meant to do both compute and gaming while, while not being horribly inefficient. Like, because Fermi was really designed for compute. And as such, its gaming efficiency was just absolutely garbage. So. They did that, and the 7000 series and 200 series were pretty damn great, actually. Um, they were very efficient at gaming, very efficient at compute, but never quite could crush Kepler or quite could crush the compute versions of NVIDIA's cards as much as they could have if they really got to stretch their legs in either direction. And that really became more evident as GCN upgraded. You would have these upgrades where you get immense compute performance but never quite felt like they were like doubling down on compute and so far it never really competed with the very top compute cards from nvidia and well it would be good gaming efficiency relative to the previous gem it always would have some cards that just did not have the right uh the same efficiency as nvidia's counterparts and that's because they had all those compute components bolted on in fact, that's why I liked Vega so much, is because despite what most boneheads don't seem to get, that was GCN really deciding to double down in one direction, and double down well it did. Vega competed with um, Volta cards from NVIDIA that were on 12 nanometer, and were, I believe, what's the, uh, I think like 80, so is it 70 or 80 percent? 70% larger die sizes, you know, over 800 millimeter squared versus a 400 and like 90 millimeter squared Vega card. That's ridiculous that they were within 20% of the compute performance in certain tasks. Vega is incredibly impressive. It just, yeah, it wasn't meant for gaming. But now they have RDNA. Now they have a gaming first architecture. That means they can not just have GCN focus on compute, but triple down on it. And I think that's what hashtag mega vega vega 30 or arcturus whatever you want to call it is going to do now let's take a look at these articles quick just to sum up the details so at first all we really got from these articles and of course links in the description was it's a probably a vega based professional gpu a new more powerful one meant for the professional market and i get why people were just like eh, stronger vega but then as we kept going through here, we saw IDs show that, no, this thing is definitely coming, right? It's in Linux patches, which tends to be what leaks AMD's roadmap before anything else, uh, at least pointing to this coming within a year, I would say. But then we got some breakdowns and the big, you know, drop the mic moment increased from 64 to 128 compute units. Putting it right up against Amdahl's Law. Again, guys, that's really what they should do if they want to make the most efficient compute card early. Put it, Just get there. Right at Amdahl's Law. And that looks like that's what they're going to do. 8,192 stream processors. So again, I wouldn't say it's 100% confirmed, nor do we know if they will leave all of it enabled, the time frame, 
or if they could cancel it, they could just decide to cancel it and delay a new compute architecture and just use RDNA. We don't know for sure this will come out, but I love the idea of this, the idea of AMD taking GCN and going, okay, we have RDNA. We're going to strip out the stuff it doesn't need. Here is the ultimate dense compute card. And this is something that really shows you how much of a sleeping beast AMD and Radeon have been while they have been in hibernation preparing for Ryzen to dig them out of their hole, really. This is a huge, huge problem for NVIDIA. Already, Vega is very competitive in server contracts, especially because they can bundle it with Ryzen. Now, they can take a architecture. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it just keeps 64 ROPs or even removes ROPs, depending on what workloads it's meant for. I And then they just keep 128 compute units and... Go for the just an insane 300 to 350 watt compute monster. And while NVIDIA is trying to deal with that with their 12 nanometer still Turing cards next year, AMD will be punching back hard on their flank with RDNA, which doesn't have to worry about ve- you know the problems of Vega being only good at compute. Now they can just really push for gaming over here and push for ultimate compute with GCN over here. That's a problem. And let's hypothesize just a little bit further about what this would probably look like in terms of specifications. We know that Vega 20 is 331 millimeters squared die size. Okay, that's actually not that big of a die size, especially by the time Vega 30 comes out. I could see them doubling that. However, that puts it at least at 600 millimeters squared. I mean, they could make it more dense and clock it lower for sure, but I don't know. I don't know what the reticle limit is for TSMC 7 nanometer. I I honestly just can't find it. This is one of the few nodes where I can't find what it is. But I would assume a Vega 20 would be twice, would be right at that limit. And I don't know if that's ideal. So I actually think that AMD will be bringing this to either 7 nanometer EUV or, of course, AMD could use 6 nanometer EUV. EUV. This is something I talk about a lot because I think it's exciting, both for Zen 3 and now possibly for either probably not only just Vega 30, but an RDNA 2 or 3.0 update or even just like a 2.0 refresh. Um, And this is a real different node. The 6 nanometer process is 18% more dense than the 7 nanometer process. And so if we look at it that way, huh? Well, that 18% would be just about enough to get us to like a 500 and something millimeter squared die that could easily fit within a standard reticle limit. And it would be a pretty easy die shrink because this was built to allow for easy die shrinks from 7 nanometer. And furthermore, risk production starts first quarter of 2020. Would make sense why they're preparing drivers for this design already. But yeah, it, that can't just be a coincidence seeing these driver um, leaks come out with this new Vega card right before risk production starts. Think about it. AMD brought Vega, which is GCN, a proven architecture they're used to working on, to 7 nanometer before RDNA. Why not bring it to 7 nanometer EUV or 6 nanometer EUV first as well? What a great way to, again, this decade-long experience you have working on GCN, get it working on 6 nanometer before RDNA 2 or 3.0 comes there. This just really lines up making a ton of sense for me. And and considering this could be ready to come out by the end of 2020, that's like the perfect time frame to replace their 7 nanometer MI50 and 60 lineup. You know, two years later, boom, here's a 6 nanometer double the compute units right in time to compete with NVIDIA 7 nanometer Samsung. Right in time. It all lines up. That's why I made this Whispers video. It all makes so much sense to me. And one more thing I want to add to the specs is, don't be surprised if this goes above 4096 bit for HBM or uses HBM3. Not sure if HBM3 will be quite ready or economical yet, but Samsung has been talking for a while about the potential for... 6144 bit HBM cards, something that could go all the way up to two terabytes per second with the fastest HBM2 over a bus this big with 48 or even 96 gigabytes of HBM. It would truly be ridiculous. And one more time, how ridiculous a card like this would be 128 compute units, 6 nanometer EUV. 
48 or 96 gigabytes of HBM over a 6144 bit bus. That's what makes me like this uh, leak so much is because AMD is unfettered. They have the money to design multiple things now, and they can do this. That's what's important to remember. All of this, whether it comes out or not, it's in their power to do this, and this would stomp the compute market away from NVIDIA while they're already caught up to IPC and gaming. So yeah, NVIDIA has awoken the sleeping beast here, and Arcturus Omega Vega card is really their worst nightmare. I know people like to shit on Vega, but guys, Vega is NVIDIA's worst nightmare. Well, for the server market, well, RDNA is their worst nightmare for the gaming market. Don't downplay the long game with the GCN here, where they're finally utilizing it how it was always supposed to. They had to wait a long time because they ran out of god dang money. But, yeah, it, it just... A lot of people will be eating their words when this comes out. I guess the last thing I'll add is I don't really see this coming to consumers. Um, like a 48-gigabyte Titan version for three grand to compete with, I don't know, a Titan Ampere or, like, you know, the Titan Volta replacement. I, I mean, it literally said in the drivers, I believe, not for graphics like i don't think this is even going to come in any meaningful i don't think it'll come to consumers even as a frontier card for two or three gram this is just truly a specialized card i mean already they don't even sell mi 50s or 60s on new egg i don't see why they would bring this there but yeah it certainly would be funny though wouldn't it if they made a radeon 6 for radeon 6 nanometer and they just had this <laughs> i don't even know what they would do with the thing 350 watt liquid cooled card I don't know, right? In some games, maybe it would game 20% better than big RDNA while using 50% more energy. I don't know. It probably wouldn't even be that good. It'd probably be like 5% better or something. So yeah, don't expect that. Although, it'd be fun to play with, I tell you that much. Probably be really good at mining, wouldn't it, too? All right, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, another Whispers video. I love doing these videos kind of the most. If you did like this, if you want to get the information out, please share it and subscribe to my channel if you've been watching my videos. Again, 20,000 views per video here. Uh, some of you need to subscribe who are watching all of my videos. And please ring the bell button too so that you get notified when I release any video, including my laptop ones. I encourage you guys to watch those you like this you will like my overclocking guide for the mx250 it's not as dumb or boring as you think i do interesting things with it just like i do in all of my videos and uh yeah dog was right there the whole time thank you